Coming up on America's Heartland, we're visiting a place you've likely never heard of before. It's a friendly town. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows everybody's business. <laughs> we have a t-shirt that says, where the hell's likely? <laughs> Saddle up and come along on a cattle drive in the tiny town of Likely, California. You hate to give up what you worked for all your life. As the rancher leading the cattle looks to secure his family legacy. We're about to turn this outfit over to the kids. It's what we need to do. I mean, that's our livelihood. You're going to stick around? Sure. I, I peeled off already, went to go see what what else is out there for a short time and realized how much I like this place. The town struggles with an unknown future. They're threatening to close our post office, and if we don't have a post office in school, we don't have a town. Meet the people who are working to keep Likely and its cattle ranching heritage alive for future generations. Up until the last few years when cattle prices have got good, there just wasn't enough income to go around. Most of us live here hate to see what's happening. Lots of changes. Lots of changes. Stay tuned for a very special America's Heartland. America's Heartland is made possible by Crop Life America, representing the companies whose modern farming innovations help America's farmers provide nutritious food for communities around the globe. The Fund for Agriculture Education, a fund created by KVIE to support America's Heartland programming. Contributors include the following. There's an old saying, uh, the first family makes the ranch and the second one uses it and the third one loses it. <laughs> so we're, we hope that's not the case. <laughs> stuff takes a while <laughs> but it's good for all day once you get it on from the school of hard knocks is the way I learned most of it you got to take another saddle this is my old saddle we put on the plane seat oh okay and they're they're thinking you know there's other ways to do this you know and so uh, they're going to be able to find out on their own well, we're just about ready to go, I guess. Rancher Ken McGarva has cattle to move. Soon, warm sunshine will give way to snowfall in the Warner Mountains, where the 250 mother cows and calves have been grazing all summer. Today is the second leg of the 20-mile trip. Ken remembers his first time making this journey well. When I was 10 years old, I went out to wrangle the horses and I neglected to cinch up my saddle tight enough after I'd put it on again. And uh, we were chasing these horses down a hillside and my horse stumbled in a badger hole on the hill and my saddle turned and I pulled the horse over and she fell down and rolled over the top of me. 65 years later, Ken's daughter Rhonda 
and his son Shane are here. Also helping the next generation of the McGarva family and some ranch hands. It's time to get the cattle off the mountain and back to the home ranch just outside the town of Likely, California for the winter. It's Ken McGarva's last time leading this annual journey. As the cattle start moving, likely California comes to life. At the most likely cafe, cook Jeannie Cannon is heating things up. Trucker Walter Sfar is ready to haul some cattle. Just down the street, Carol Weed is getting the day started at the Likely General Store. They come in for groceries, dog food, oil for their car, a gift for a wedding. You name it, I have it. The Eclectic General Store fits this town with a funny name. Townspeople drop in for daily provisions. OK, we'll get some more orders. There's a gas pump out front. It has gas and diesel. Which is good news for folks passing through on Highway 395. Likely is located in Modoc County, California. There are less than three people per square mile in this rural northeast county on the Oregon border. It's a friendly town. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows everybody's business. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 20. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Right now is hunting season. I don't think I've had a hunter in today yet, though. Carol and her husband moved to Likely from the California coast 38 years ago and bought the store a few years later. The first five years, it was 24 hours a day, and that's not real easy on a new marriage. <laughs> it was, we'd get tired of each other. But then I, after that, I started working at the school. She says Likely was a great place to raise their daughter. Carol's husband recently passed away, so now she runs the store with some volunteer help from Ken McGarva's granddaughter, Rochelle. The store is Likely's gathering spot for locals. They all come in a couple times a day. That's Ken's wife, Jackie, dropping by to say hello. Well, it's been a way of life and a good, good living for me. If you need something hauled in Likely, call Walter Sfar. His trucking and tire business is rolling along with eight employees. He's been at it a while. When he and his wife Joyce first got to Likely, Harry Truman was in the White House. It's been 48, 49, 50. 1948, 49, 50. And it was a booming town then. We had two grocery stores, a hotel. We had an all night restaurant and a bar, saloon, and a leather shop. We had a peat moss plant here at that time, more eight, 10 people all the time. And it was a booming town. They fell in love with the town and never left. Work was easier to come by back then. In those days, it took a lot of people to feed the cows, to put up the hay. Now one guy can take this new machinery out there and he can put up more hay in one day and 20 wood. Some of my older uncles first came here they were working on the railroad between Madeline and Likely. When the railroad crew started coming in, there was like two to 4,000 people lived in Likely there at one time. And uh, 
a lot of them, you know, they just migrated on through as the railroad went, or most of them, because now the population sign says 200, but we have a hard time counting 200. <laughs> In fact, the 200 is covered up, and the sign needs updating again. Officially, 63 people now live in Likely. The railroad and other employers that once made Likely a boomtown are long gone. Other than the ranching industry that's here, why, not much to keep it going. The opportunity that brought Ken McGarva's ancestors, Walter's farm, Say hi. and Carol Weed to Likely is fading. <laughs> The school where Carol worked for 28 years closed its doors a few years ago. The few remaining kids in town take the bus to a nearby city. It was sad. None of us wanted it to close. And they're threatening to close our post office. And if we don't have a post office in school, we don't have a town, I don't think. And most everybody here feels that way. It's a familiar refrain in rural communities. With few jobs available, the next generation is forced to move away. Carol Weed's daughter now lives 300 miles away in Eureka. Walter Sfar's children moved away too. I never wanted to move. I like the country. A lot of nice people here. They've all been good, loyal people, and it's a good place. I don't know of anywhere I'd rather be if I if I was to quit today, I wouldn't want to go anywhere. I've traveled all over the state of California and half the other states around here. And I don't know of a place I'd rather be than right here. Ken McGarva didn't leave Likely either. He and his brother bought their father's ranch in 1968. His daughter Rhonda lives here and helps with the cattle. How are we doing so far, Rhonda? We're doing pretty good. We've got quite a bit, few many calves in the back, but I'd like to see more cows back here, but I think the lead's still up here, so we'll if we can get the calves pushed ahead of some of the cows and they get the cows wrapped in around behind them, we'll get some mothered up. So you, you want to get the mothers and the calves together? Yes, yes, there's a lot less stress on all of them. Your calves will uh, use a lot less energy when they you know that their mother's just a little ways away instead of they think that their mothers are still back behind us in the field where they just came from. It's a family affair. Ken's son Shane lives near Sacramento, but still knows how to crack a bullwhip, so he comes back to help round up the cattle. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Shane's son-in-law Justin and his son Jared are also keeping the cattle moving. Boy, it strikes me this is a real family operation you got here. Yeah, sure. And uh, most of the people that work for us, if they aren't related, we, we, you know, we usually feel like they're family eventually. But definitely, it's a family, family operation for uh, more than 100 years now. And we've really, really been lucky and blessed. This place has given us a lot. And we try hard to get, give back to it. <laughs> you know, I notice uh, you know, a lot of family members in various families, ranching and farming families, Generation after generation, they kind of peel off, move away. Sure. You're going to stick around? Sure. I, I peeled off already, went to go see what, what else was out there for a short time and realized how much I liked this place. So, yeah, I'm going to stick around. My wife's having a little baby, and we, have a, we already have a nine-year-old girl, and so if they want to stick around, they can and do this. And if not, they can go check out the world their own, their own way. So. And tell me about coming back. You decided to come back. Yeah, I went off to school and uh, got a teaching credential and stuck that out for a couple of years, and this is, this is where my heart's at, so. Working for Ken's been a, a blessing. It's been very challenging at times, because we're not always seeing eye to eye, but 
for the most part, uh, it's been a very nice way to wake up every day and, and go live my life. I couldn't ask for a, a more fair boss and we've uh, learned a lot from my grandparents and my dad and uncle and aunt. Keeping family close is important. Ken's brother, Dwayne, hung up his ranching hat several years ago and is the historian and photographer of the family. The first McGarvas arrived in California from Scotland in 1903. And then in 1912, my grandparents, my dad, two brothers and a sister came over and they were uh, going down to Liverpool to get on the Titanic. But they had overbooked it or had filled it up and so they didn't get on, which was a pretty good break. <laughs> Duane's photographs capture the beauty of the area and this family's heritage. One thing I want to mention about this valley and likely, we have all had good neighbors and that everybody gets along, works together, and everybody gathers everybody else's cattle in the fall. You don't ride by and say, well, that's so-and-so, he can come get his own cow. It, we don't do that here. My father and uh, the other neighbors around here, their fathers and grandfathers, they all worked together, so it just passed on down generation to generation. Ken McGarva is in front today, alone, leading the cattle. He can't see his family members bringing up the rear. They're too far back. He must trust that they are keeping the cattle in line. In a few more months, those cowboys in the back will get their chance to be in charge. The next generation of McGarvas will purchase a portion of his cattle ranch. And like that faith he has in them now, they'll have to trust that they're getting the job done. Oh, it's, it's what we need to do. I mean, that's our livelihood. A lot of guys say, what are you going to do when you retire? And some of them say, buy a ranch, you know. <laughs> We're about to turn this outfit over to the kids, and Jackie and I bought another house across the valley over here, and so we're, we'll be moving over there in the next few months and, and uh, see how the kids make out, I guess. Good chance. Ken and Jackie got married as teenagers and have spent their life on the ranch. Full-time ranchers don't get many days off, so after Ken retires, Jackie's looking forward to being able to travel. That's on our honeymoon. <laughs> taking a picture of me. We were taking pictures of each other. <laughs> I asked Ken what his family means to him. Well, that's a tough one. Love my wife more than anything. Jared McGarva has plans for the future of his family's ranch. He's exploring direct-to-customer beef sales. The future of Likely is also on Jared's mind. Oh, heck yeah, we've got, we've got maybe, I don't know, four or five different young families that are starting up that are about my age in their early 30s and late 20s, and a lot of young guys like Jesse and Alex over here that, that they're, they're just about thinking about that type of stuff, so it's, it's uh, all we can do. We try hard to, to keep people in the town. <laughs> yeah, we need more babies. <laughs> As the cattle come down off the dusty mountain road, Ken stops them at a fenced-in area on the edge of the highway. While the calves find their mothers, Cutest cowboy on the range. Family members stop by and the cowboys get a few minutes to relax. I did this in Quincy one time. I was doing rope tricks up here. Ah. And the youngest generation of McGarvas gets a feel for the saddle. Likely it's just a few miles down the road. The lunch rush is on at the most likely cafe. Hamburger. It's a small crowd. Folks here are concerned about the future, but there is a resilience in their spirit and signs of hope. Their plans to turn that closed down school into a community center. 
volunteers still report to duty at the fire department, and the area continues to be popular for out-of-town hunters. One question those visitors always seem to have, what's with this town's unusual name? Well, the story is that they're, they were all together and they're trying to come up with a name so they could have a post office. The early settlers, the, the, before it was named likely, it was called South Fork. Well, there's already a South Fork, California, so they couldn't have that. So they said, well, we'll uh, uh, have to change the name. So there were a bunch of old guys sitting around the store in Likely, and they were trying to decide what to name it. Just kept coming up with names, and they weren't, nothing was working. And some guy said, do you think we're ever likely to get a name for this town? One of them says, it's likely we'll never find a name for it. The other whole guy says, well, let's call it Likely. So that's how it got its name. That's the story I heard. Is that the one you're hearing too? Is that a true story? That is a true story. And if you're headed into Likely for lunch on this early afternoon, you might want to avoid Highway 64. The last two miles of today's trip are down the road to the pasture on the edge of town. There's still one more leg of this cattle drive to go before the cattle get to the McGarva's ranch, but tonight, they rest. Oysters are ready. Back at the ranch, the family gathers for fresh oysters right off the grill. This is California, of course, but it's also cattle country, so Jackie has made a beef pot roast. Ken and Jackie's son, Ross McGarva, and his wife, Kelly, are here from Oregon. No, that can just stay in the container it's in. Oh. Ross will also be a part of the next group in charge of the ranch. Really? After a long day on horseback, they've earned this moment. Cheers. They'll be back out with the cattle soon enough. As the sun sets on likely tonight, the town faces an uncertain future. There's uh, lots of little towns, like the several between here and Reno, that the same things happen to. Little town of Madeline over here, all it's got in it now is a post office, and the store and the cafe there is closed, and gas station. Most of us that live here hate to see what's happening. You know, we're hoping something can happen to keep it like it is. As for Ken McGarva, he learned early, sit tall in the saddle, and make sure it's cinched tight. Most importantly, let the horse know who's in charge. So imagine letting go your legacy, your family name. You know, you hate to give up what you've worked for all your life. Handing down a ranch is one of the most difficult things a family can face. Disagreements lead to discord, and a family legacy ends up in the hands of the highest bidder instead of the next generation. The McGarvas admit they aren't immune to those challenges. There are reminders all around them. We've got two of the old family ranches here now that are in absentee ownership, and they don't even live here. The devil is in the details, and the McGarvas are still working those out. But Ken vows to help the next generation with the ranch. Soon he'll no longer be leading the cattle, but this cowboy hanging up his hat for good? Not likely.
Before we go, just a reminder to visit our America's Heartland website. You'll find us at americasheartland.org. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time right here on America's Heartland. You can purchase a DVD or Blu-ray copy of this program. Here's the cost. To order, just visit us online or call 888-814-3923. America's Heartland is made possible by CropLife America, representing the companies whose modern farming innovations help America's farmers provide nutritious food for communities around the globe. The Fund for Agriculture Education, a fund created by KVIE to support America's Heartland programming. Contributors include the following.